Welcome to Fire Engineering Training Minutes. My name is Paul La Rochelle, and I'm going to be assisted today by Jimmy Adams. Uh, the situation that we found ourselves in is we have a victim that is impaled on a rebar wall, and we're going to talk about how we would stabilize this patient by creating a harness using webbing, and then we're also going to talk about the preferred tool for actually making the cuts to be able to remove our victim from this wall. So if I could get Jimmy to come over, he'll be my uh, assistant. And most people carry webbing in their pocket in some form. I have my webbing in a rubber glove. The purpose for that is it keeps the webbing nice and secure and fairly clean. It's easy to deploy by simply pulling it off the glove. And now I'm ready to actually create my harness. The webbing should be approximately 20 feet in length. Uh, 24 is fine as well. Uh, anything short of 20 feet, you may end up with larger individuals uh, having a problem getting over the top of the shoulders, which you'll see will allow me to keep my victim in an upright position. So the first thing is my webbing has to be tied in a water knot in a loop. And I'm going to take this knot and I'm going to use it as a benchmark. I'm going to use it as a landmark. I'm going to also use my shoulder as a third hand. So I'm going to reach through Jimmy's legs, and as I put the knot in the small of his back, I'm going to reach around with both of my hands and pull a piece of the webbing forward. So now I have a bite of webbing in each hand. I'm going to grab a piece of webbing with each of my hands, and as I come forward, I've now created a seat harness, which I would be able to tie in a knot put a carabiner if that's what I so choose to have or I can go over each of his shoulders and now I'm creating more or less a basket so now when I come around the back with a carabiner I can keep him in a nice upright position so many of you carry webbing in your pockets um, it's important that you actually know how to use the webbing appropriately and like everything else it's a perishable skill so it constantly needs to be practiced and reinforced so that you're able to perform this during an actual emergency. I'm Paul Arachelle. This is Jimmy Adams. Thank you for watching Fire Engineering Training Minutes.